God has a calling, has a commission, has a design for this generation. Just that you would be stirred with the realities of Jesus Christ and then go and live as everyone else lives? There's no way that that is the purpose of Jesus Christ in your life. He has sought you out. He has singled you out. He is bringing truth to bear upon your soul so that you would be altered by it and that you would go into this world and turn it upside down. You have a job to do. And it's the job of the kingdom. And you have a responsibility. You have been entrusted much. You are responsible for much. However, this commission that comes with this epic background movie score with it is being brought to those who are literally the most unlikely to be heroic representations of the kingdom of God in this generation. I'm not just talking about you. I'm talking about our generation. This younger generation that is being raised up. We have literally been robbed of the 30 to 40 year olds. Almost all have been swept away in the emergent movement. I mean, we literally have had an entire generation swallowed up. The parental generation at the helm of the church right now is limping along, struggling for strength and power. And we have not had a model. The younger generation that is now coming into that position of strength has not seen it. They have not beheld what the church of Jesus Christ is to look like. In fact, academically, spiritually, socially, emotionally, almost every, in every regard, we have been dealt a very weak hand. It's like we have a two in our hand, a three, maybe a five, and a seven. We're not looking good. We don't have anything to deal with, anything to bet on. We do not have strength. And yet, God smiles a wry smile and goes, just watch what I can do with weakness. So you may not feel very impressive. It's all right. You may not be very impressive. If the world was measuring you, if the church of Jesus Christ throughout the ages was measuring us, they might not be impressed. It's like, God, you've got to be kidding. You're going to use that? Yes, this is my way. I will use the weakest. I will use the dumbest. I will use the most unready generation. Mark Berline, a secular uh, guy, wrote a book uh, called uh, The Dumbest Generation. And he did a study. It's about a 400-page book. And Dan was feeding me all sorts of good information. I was saying, I need that information again for this message. Okay, so we are considered that 18 to 24-year-old range, and I know I'm saying we, I'm 40, okay, so, but I identify with that generation because we have a lion's share of Ellerslie students that hang out in that age range, okay? The most unready generation ever, not just unready for anything, but for battle. Literally, we are not equipped. And when he was studying military readiness, never, possibly ever in all of world history has there been a generation more unready for battle than ours. Isn't that an extraordinary statement? Just think about these things spiritually, because this is a secular guy that's doing an analysis on a culture. But I want you to realize that that physical readiness for physical battle applies to spiritual readiness for spiritual battle. 75% of an entire generation between 18 and 24 are ineligible to join the military. 75%. Can you say the word pathetic with me? Why? Well, there's a high level of obesity. This is embarrassing. Obesity. Unfit physically, unable to perform the most basic military maneuvers. Uneducated. Oh, wait a minute. Are you going to say we're uneducated? You can go to school and be uneducated. Isn't that an incredible realization? That you can go through school and they can pass you because they don't want you just lingering in the grade. And they'll keep moving you through the system and they'll stick out practically illiterate students all the time. They can find oatmeal in the grocery store because they recognize the oatmeal box, not because they can read oatmeal. Unlearned mentally, unable to pass the most basic academic tests of competence. We can't hear. You have to be able to hear, I guess, to get into the military at some level. Lost acute hearing ability due to the volume of music. It's embarrassing. We are unfit to protect our lives, to protect our marriages, to protect our families, to protect our, our towns, protect our states, to protect our nations. We are unready for battle. 
So the dumbest generation ever. This is the book uh, that I was referring to. It's actually called The Dumbest Generation, or this is the, the other option title for it, or Don't Trust Anyone Over 30. That's an attitude of an entire generation. You can't trust these guys. Those over 30, I, I, we have definitely seen some weaknesses in the older generation. There's no doubt about it. But I want you to know, those over 30 possibly know more than you do as those of you that are under 30. You may know more about uh, computer programming. However, they oftentimes know more about life. And we have disconnected ourselves from any knowledge fuel source that would give us an understanding of how life actually works. So look at this. It goes through, I think it's like six things I'll mention here. But six observations of why we are the dumbest generation ever. How do, how do you guys like being classified as that? Isn't that a fun title to wear? See, I'm trying to get you mad is what I'm trying to do. Don't accept that title. Don't sit around and allow that to be your title. Hit it back. Knowledge deficits. The least supply of common life, social, and cultural knowledge of any generation. Here's, this is my little statement that I add to it. Disconnect them from their devices and they die. See, as long as they have their computer, their laptop, their, you know, their PDA, whatever it is, they can make it through life. They can figure out directions. They can do their research. How do they do their research? Google. That's their research. And so as a result, you disconnect them from their devices, stick them in a, in a forest all by themselves and you know, run away with the car. They die. They have no way of surviving. They do not know how to live outside of the system. They're bibliophobes, which isn't just a fear of the Bible. This is a fear of books. The highest disregard of books and reading of any generation. Now, look, there's my comment. Give them a book and they turn it into kindling. Number three, screen time. It's the greatest amount of time in front of a screen of any generation. I mean, you could say, well, previous generations didn't even have screens. You know, I don't know what it was, the 40s or 50s when television started coming out and they were watching television all the time because it was such a novelty, doesn't even compare to what we are doing in this generation. We are almost always in front of a screen, whether it's a computer screen or a television screen or a movie screen, almost always, or a cell phone screen. Whatever it is, we are addicted to the screen. And obviously, this is having some kind of effect upon us. Don't expect them to be involved in the rescue of this world, for they are completely lost in another one. Online learning skills, the least effective research skills which garner true information of any generation. Our generation does not know how to find true information. We know how to find information. We have the information superhighway. Oh yeah, we know how to find information. Is it true? Are you able to test and see if it's true? Do you have any filter of knowing if it's true? Well, it's the highest Google ranking. Let me tell you, the highest Google ranking is nearly inevitably wrong. Okay? It does not necessarily mean it is right. It just means more people are turning to it than something else. There are all sorts of top Google rankings in this world, but that does not mean that they are true. The motto for information gathering, the highest Google ranking rules. Wikipedia is the new Bible, and good bloggers are the oracles of the now. If you can write, this generation will submit to you, lay down their lives before you and say, train my mind how to think. It does not mean that you know how to live. It does not mean you have a scrap of actual real-world intelligence. You have not earned a medal through your life lived, and yet you can write, and you can impress people with your phraseology, and as a result, this generation will submit to you, and they will follow your lead. You can be 17 years old and not know a thing, but you can write. You can control the minds of a generation. Betrayal of mentors is another hallmark of this generation, of these 18 to 24 year olds. They're the most apt to disbelieve, disregard, or betray teachers and mentors of any generation. Their commitments mean nothing, for they are loyal only to that which feels good to them in the moment. This better not describe you, by the way. If it does, you need to discard these behaviors. Because there is a loyalty that is needed of you. I know it's hard to be loyal to people that don't necessarily seem like they're living it either. But there are deep loyalties that need to be bred in your soul. And I'm not just saying to parents and, you know, leaders and church leaders and things like that. 
But if you grow up with this mentality, guess what? You'll be flaky with God. You'll be flaky with his word. Because what feels good to you in the moment, I guarantee you a good, hot gospel message may not feel good to your soul in the moment. Do you discard it? Are you going to betray your mentor, the word of God? This behavior is despicable. No more warriors. The generation least apt to produce warriors for cultural, moral, civic, and private good. The motto for exertion of soul. Supply strength and passion only to the causes that best serve self's comfort and self's continued gratification. What gets you up off the couch? Self. If it's gonna, how's it going to help me? Is there anything in it for me? All right. I'll give a little energy to it. The moment that starts to turn and it starts to be for the benefit of someone else, hey, I'm done. I did my part. I'm sitting back down on the couch. What kind of warriors are those? A warrior is one who knows the value of a cause bigger than himself. That's what a warrior is. You don't just go out and fight for your own reputation. We, as Christians, fight for the glory of Jesus Christ. Something far bigger than self. In fact, to fight for it, you have to deny self. If you're fashioned after this model, Christianity is in the tank. Because everything that makes Christianity strong is being defied with this behavior. We can't accept it. So remember the title. I'm not trying to just discourage you. I'm saying the most unlikely heroes. So there's a positive spin on this. I do not accept this as the final declaration over the 18 to 24 year old age range. And you shouldn't either if you just happen to be in that age range. Get rid of this. This is a stigma. You are being deemed literally the dumbest generation ever. What are you going to do about it? Hey, do you guys remember how I started? The most unlikely heroes. Remember I was making you feel bad? You're part of the dumbest generation ever? Now that's the secular take on us. I would like us to turn that on its face. I would like us to rise up and say, God, my background may be faulty. It may not be, you know, have all the holes filled in. Something may not be complete in my education, sure. Yes, and I've been scared of books my entire life, and as a result, I am quite scared of the Bible. I will admit it. And yes, I've spent most of my life in front of a screen. Yes, there's, there's problems here. I have not shown loyalty even unto my parents, let alone unto your word, unto your leadership in my life. That needs to change now. Take this wreck and shape it into a picture of your glory. Jesus Christ was born in a stable. And he did that on purpose. As a testimony to all of us that he would take stables that stink and he would cause them to be his birthplace. And as a result, he would transform them into his castles of glory. Yes, you may be feeble. Yes, you may be weak. You may be like Gideon, the least in his father's house, the least of the tribes. God should ignore us. Absolutely. That's a given. But for some reason, he's noticing us. And he's saying, I'd like to use you. Would you allow me to take your life and turn it into a picture of triumph? You better allow a growl of God to enter your soul, to rise up and say, no more of this lethargy. No more of this ineptitude. I am not going to blame my weaknesses and my ignorances on the culture I grew up in or on my parents or on my educational background. I am the raw material of God and he can do with me whatever he sees fit. And suddenly we have the formation of a hero. You don't have to be brilliant. Who cares about your IQ? Let God's IQ be your IQ. You have 66 books of his IQ. He's one smart guy and he's given you all his smarts. Isn't that an incredible thought? All of them just laid bare for you and then he'll even be the helper when you look at the scripture to help you understand it. You have everything you need, everything, for life and godliness in Christ Jesus.